Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Oak Park. We're thankful for your presence here today for worship, and we look forward to worshiping alongside you on this, the second Sunday of Lent. As we've talked about Lent as a period of reflection, of repentance, and of renewal. And so we're thankful that you've chosen to reflect today and to repent, and also to choose to renew yourself, to walk in the ways of Christ. We look forward to worshiping together. And as we begin our worship today, we sing our doxology. Let's sing it together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures, him above ye heaven Today, our call to worship and invocation prayer and Lord's Prayer will be led by Sharon Mullins. Sharon, thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for leading us into worship. Good morning, church family, wherever you are. Let us, let us come before the Lord. The promises of God are like deep, bulbs in the soil. God is making all things new. The promises of God are like crocuses peeking out of the snow. God is making all things new. The promises of God are like fresh turned earth. God is making all things new. The promises of God are all around us, though we cannot perceive them yet. God is making all things new. Come, worship our God, for we know the seasons will change and our God will make all things new. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, precious Lord, how truly great thou art. The universe, Father, resounds with your greatness, with your sovereignty, with your holiness. You do, Father, indeed, make all things new. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come together, to hear your word of truth, to sing your praises, and to be brought before your throne of grace that we so desperately need. We praise you because, and only because, of the saving work of your son Jesus that we may come before you. We pray that we may be ever mindful and on our knees in the recognition of how great is our sin, but how much greater is that Savior. And now, Father, we invoke your Holy Spirit to be in our midst, to inform and bless every word that is spoken and sung here today. We thank you, Jesus, for sending us your love, your comfort, your peace, and we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us, Lord, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. And now, Father, 
what we know not teach us, what we have not give us, and what we are not make us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sharon, for leading us today in that beautiful prayer. Our hymn of praise today is, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Let's sing this hymn of praise together. us, O great Jehovah, through this barren land. Children of all ages, as we talked about last week, we are in the season of Lent, a time of reflection, a time of repentance, and a time of renewal. Today, you're going to hear in just a moment from Miss Pat a, a story from Mark's Gospel, where Jesus tells his disciples that if they want to follow in his footsteps, they have to deny themselves to take up their cross and to follow him. Now, if you look at it in Luke's gospel, uh, it says you will follow him daily. Daily. That means that we don't just do this once or twice. It means that we choose to follow in the footsteps of Jesus every day. We choose to deny ourselves and to take up our crosses every day. It's not one of those things that we can do once or twice in our life and be like, okay, good, we've done this, now let's do something else. No, in order to truly follow Christ, it means we have to do it on a daily basis. And that's what makes it so hard, isn't it? Isn't that what makes it hard? It makes it hard 
every day to do things in the way that Jesus wants us to. Yet, that's what he tells us we have to do. He says, if you want to be one of my disciples. It's a choice that you and I have to make. It's a choice that will change not only our lives, but it will also change the world around which we live. Because if we truly decide that today and tomorrow and every day of our lives, if we choose to follow in the footsteps of Jesus by denying ourselves, by taking up our cross, and by following him every day, if we make that choice, if we make that our choice, then God's kingdom will come to earth as it is in heaven, as we pray every week in our Lord's Prayer. But the big part of that is if. If we will do it. And so, children of all ages, I have a question for you. Will you make that your choice today and tomorrow in every day of your lives? If so, make it known. Tell the world that you're a Christian. Tell the world that Jesus is the king of your life. Tell the world through your actions and also through your words. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for leading us each and every day of our lives to walk in your footsteps. Help us, dear Lord. Help us to take the opportunity that you have granted us to deny ourselves, to pick up our crosses, and to follow you daily. Give us strength and courage for the journey ahead as we choose to follow you and you alone. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Our scripture reading today is going to be read by Pat Saffold, Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Thank you, Pat, for being here. Then Jesus began to teach his disciples. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and the legal experts, and killed. And then, after three days, rise from the dead. He said this plainly, but Peter took hold of Jesus and, scolding him, he said, began to correct him. Jesus turned and looked at the disciples, then sternly corrected Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking of God's thoughts, but human thoughts. After calling the crowd together with his disciples, Jesus said to them, All who want to come after me must say no to themselves. Take up their cross and follow me. All who want to save their lives must lose them. But all who lose their lives because of me and because of the good news will save them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their lives? What will people give in exchange for their lives? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this unfaithful and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he comes in the Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, everyone. Let us pray at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, you alone are worthy of all praise and honor. Your glory extends without end. Your love for us is truly unsearchable and never ending. Your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Father, your saving grace forgives us of all sins committed during our limited social interactions of the past week and into our unknown futures. So we ask you to be with us as we reflect on your love. We are your servants committed to showing the world what it means to live righteous, just, and merciful lives. We confess, Lord, that we are undeserving of your mercy and kindness, so our hearts remain full of gratitude for your continued answers to our prayers. Your grace is insufficient, and so we relinquish our self-centered desires for the temporal ways of this world. We no longer trust in the immediacy of the world's foundation that offers no security in your kingdom. Father, we live according to your true wisdom and we fear only you. We have rejected our former lives of our self-sufficiency for you provide us with the true security of eternity. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us not to stumble. Thank you, Lord, for removing fear and thus allowing our sleep to be sweet. For you alone is at our side, and there will be no new normal for your servants. <clears throat> you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Father, as we come to you in worship, we ask for your continued protection during this pandemic. Lord, we know we must endure troubles and trials, but we are taking heart and full of your joy. O oh Lord, we pray for our church family, <clears throat> our communities, our nation, and our world. It is you who is at the head of all governments, and your gospel is true and unifying. So we pray your will, and your will only be done. Be with us as we represent your kingdom by spreading only love and peace to all our sufferings to the isolation and dis uh, despair of hopelessness. Oh, Father, be with Pastor Haley as he preaches your message of salvation. Oh, Lord, we pray that your kingdom comes and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So prepare us even now to rejoice in the day of your glorious return when every knee will bow and praise and glorify your name forever into eternity. It is all these things we pray in the precious and holy name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, Monroe. As I mentioned at the um, beginning of our service today, this is the second Sunday of Lent, and I'm going to continue to repeat this over and over and over again, but Lent is a, is a season of reflection and prayer, a season of confession and repentance, and a season of self-denial and humility. Lent is a long and demanding journey, and it won't end until April the 4th when we celebrate the joy of Easter morning. And if we travel this journey correctly, this journey will cost us. Because Lent is not cheap. It never has been, and it never will be. It reminds me of that thing that Jesus said to his disciples. And we, we heard it just a few moments ago when Pat read the scripture. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. 
deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And in, the, in the translation that Pat read, it said, it said, if all who want to come after me must say no to themselves to take up their cross and follow me. I mentioned during the children's time that Luke uh, that Luke says it a little bit differently. It's basically the same message, but if, if anyone wants to become my disciples, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Daily. Jesus says, if anyone would come after me, And when he says that one thing that is abundantly clear in the text and many others that are liberally sprinkled throughout the Bible, Jesus wants us to follow him. He wants all of us to follow him. But he knows that there's no guarantee that what he wants is what he'll get. People may follow him, but then again, they may not. You may follow him, and I may follow him, but then again, we may not. It all depends. It all depends on what we decide, because you see, it's a matter of personal choice. And no one understood this any better than Jesus. That's why he began his invitation with the word, if. And I wonder, what are we going to do with this invitation? Are you going to follow Jesus or not? Am I or not? The answer seems easy. It seems like, of course, yes, we will follow Jesus, but don't get in too big of a hurry. Because you better think about your answer this this morning. You better think about it for a moment because following Jesus sounds pretty good at first, but it isn't for the faint-hearted. And on closer examination, it certainly doesn't appeal to the masses. In fact, it costs. It costs everything. It costs your life. Notice that Jesus doesn't end this with, with this, uh, with this de- decision to, to follow. If you want to follow, you have to deny yourselves and, and to take up your cross and follow me. No, he goes on and he says, All who want to save their lives will lose them. But all who lose their lives because of me and because of the good news will save them. You have to lose to save. That doesn't make sense, does it? That doesn't make sense in our world, does it? No, it doesn't make sense to have to lose something in order to gain something. I mean, we already have life. How if how by losing life are we able to gain life? This idea all begins with self-denial, which is precisely where Lent begins. Last week, we paused to ponder the testing of our Lord when he went out into the wilderness for 40 days of fasting to be tempted by Satan. And as we talked about Satan, this accuser, uh, as you will recall, offered Jesus bread and fame and power, but Jesus refused all of them. And he did that because and by denying himself. He did that by denying himself. And he expects nothing less from you and me. Self-denial. That's where Lent begins. And that is why one of the traditions of Lent is to give up something. A friend of mine told me the other day, that he gave up ice cream for Lent. But 
after talking with his wife, it seems like they haven't been buying ice cream for a while. There are some some people that give up the same thing every year for Lent. My brother-in-law typically chooses to uh, give up um, uh, social media for Lent. And I know that there are also people who give up television every year for Lent. And that would be impossible for me because March Madness happens during Lent. (laughs) Eric Reed in an article in Leadership Leadership Journal, admits that the first year that he gave up TV for Lent was not of his own choosing. He was in seminary at the time, and it happened that several weeks before Easter, a burglar broke into his apartment and robbed him of uh, of a variety of items, two of which were his VCR and his cable box. He said that the reception was so bad on his TV that he just kept it off and and decided to keep it off until after Easter. And so, since that time, it's become for him a part of his Lenten journey. Self-denial. Self-denial. And I, I guess sometimes we have to get a little bit of help to get started, don't we? Yeah, sometimes that self-denial is harder for us than we might imagine. Lent begins our Lord's temptation, or begins with our Lord's temptation, and it concludes with his passion. When he marched into Jerusalem and was betrayed, arrested, tried, convicted, beaten, crucified, and buried. In that week, Jesus took up his own cross, and he laid down his life for love and for truth, And you know what? He expects nothing less from us. That's why he says, If anyone would come after me, he or she must take up his or her cross. Sometimes I think that this is what he meant when he said in John chapter 14, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because if you want to find God, you you will only find Him through self-denial and service and sacrifice. Which is to say, you will find God when you follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Self-denial and cross-bearing. These are the true marks of Lent, and more importantly, they are the true marks of Christian faith. And yet, I wonder if we understand them at all. I wonder if we practice them at all. I wonder if we have the capacity or the opportunity to know what all of these things are about. Calvin Miller wrote a book titled, Jesus Loves Me, celebrating the profound truths of a simple hymn. And in that book, he relates a personal observation. He says, I think the most vibrant missionaries I've met are medical doctors serving in the lonely outposts of the Arab world. These physicians and nurses are well aware that in in winning a Muslim to Christ, They condemn their converts to ostracism and persecution, even martyrdom. And one doctor said to me, How do you think I feel in longing to lead people to Christ, knowing that the moment my patients receive Christ, they face a life and death contempt in their culture? It must be pointless, Miller said. The doctor replied, pointless? That's the point of the gospel. The cost and consequence of receiving Christ is the entire point because Jesus says you have to take up your cross and and follow me. Again, I'm asking this question, do we get this? 
Do we understand this point? Have we gotten this point? Is there any appreciable difference in the way we approach our lives or live our lives from those who make no claim to follow Christ? Are we more likely to deny ourselves and others? Are we more likely to be ostracized or excluded? Are we more likely to be willing to lay down our lives for the sake of truth and love? Have we really taken up our cross, you and I? As I stop to think about it, the problem may begin in that little word, if. Maybe that's what discipleship is to most of us. It's something we discuss, something that we play around with from time to time, but certainly it's not a way of life. Certainly it's not the organizing principle around which our lives are built. But when you listen to Jesus, it's clear that in his mind this is no game. This is not something you just play around with. Because when he says, if anyone would come after me, he is making a serious invitation. An invitation of life and death. Self-denial is no cross. Cross-bearing isn't just something you talk about, it's something you do. Like I said earlier in the service, I, I, I think I prefer Luke's depiction of the text because he reminds us that if we want to follow in the ways of Jesus, we have to pick up our cross daily. We have to deny ourselves daily. It's clear that following Christ isn't something you can do in one fell swoop. No, it's a daily matter. You have to take up your cross every day. And that's what makes it so, so hard. Last week I mentioned to you Fred Craddock, and I'm, I'm going to mention him again today because I love the way that he, that he talks about this uh, this passage, he said, most of us would like to be able to secure our Christian commitment in a single dramatic act of faith. We'd like to invest our spiritual fortune in a blaze of glory, if you will. But it doesn't work that way. Instead, we have to take all of our treasure and exchange it for rolls of pennies and nickels and dimes and quarters. And then we spend a little bit here and a little bit there every day. We stop and we visit a shut-in in the middle of the day when there are at least a, a hundred other things that have to be done. We teach children in Sunday school. We pray for that neighbor who doesn't particularly like us. Just a little self-denial here and a little cross-bearing there. And it never ends. It never ends. This this is what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about a way of life. He was talking about truth and love. He was talking about following him. It is not easy to follow Jesus. It is not for the faint-hearted. It is not for the wimps. It is for people who have made the decision that every day they are going to change their way of living. They are no longer going to be 
consumed about self, but they are going to be thinking about the ways of other people and the things that other people need, about the necessities of life that other people do not currently have. That's one big part of self-denial, is recognizing that by denying ourselves, we have so much more opportunity, so much more power to give to other people. We have so much more time because we're not consumed about how much I can gain for myself. We're more concerned about how can I uh, provide for the needs of someone else. And that's what Jesus does throughout his life, right? He doesn't accumulate wealth for himself. He doesn't have this lavish home to go home, to go back to every night. He doesn't have lots of money that he spends on frivolous things. No, what does he do? He goes around and he heals people in the way that he could. Now, we may not be able to heal people in the way that Jesus could, but we can heal people by giving them the things that they need, can't we? A couple of weeks ago, we were having a discussion, and one of you said, Pastor, has there ever been a church that went bankrupt from giving all of what they had to make sure that other people had what they needed? And I said, I don't know. And I still don't know. But then that person said, well, why don't we try doing it? Why don't we try doing it? And as I think about that more and more, I wonder why. Why don't we try it? We don't try it because self-denial is so foreign to us. It means that we have to give up things that have become so much a part of who we are to the point that we say, that is not the thing that Christ needs from me. Christ needs me to deny myself and to take up my cross daily and follow Him. It's hard work. Hard work, but it's work that's essential for the kingdom of God to be ushered in on earth as it is in heaven. And so this Lent, I wonder, do you want the kingdom of God to reign on earth as it is in heaven? I want you to really reflect upon that. Because it's easy to say, of course, Pastor. Of course I want the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God to reign on earth as it is in heaven. But are you willing to do what it takes in order for that to happen? Am I? Are we as a congregation? Our hymn of response today is, Wherever He leads, I'll go. Wherever He leads, I'll go. Do we really believe those words? Do we really want to sing those words today? Are those the types of words that come natural to us? No. But are they the words that we need to sing today? Absolutely. And so as we sing this hymn, brothers and sisters, I pray that these words will be an outpouring of our hearts, reminding ourselves that wherever Christ leads, we will go. Let's sing together.
and follow me. I heard my master say, I gave my life to ransom thee. Surrender your own to come to a time of giving back a portion of that which God has given to us. 
Think about those words. Wherever he leads, I'll go. What's he leading you to do right now? Let's pray together. Wherever you lead, we'll go, dear Lord. So help us. Help us in this time of offering, not to think only about monetary gifts, but help us to think about giving of our time and our talent and our treasure to you. For you are the king of our lives. You are the one who invites us to follow in your footsteps. And so, Lord, if we would be your disciples, help us to know that we must deny ourselves to take up our cross daily and follow you. Help us as we give of ourselves, our time, of our talent, and our treasure to give our all to you, our Lord and King. Amen. Joel's going to lead us in offertory music. And as he does, think of the ways that you can give of yourself, your time and your talent and your treasure for Christ's kingdom today. Amen. Amen. A few announcements today before we uh, sign off.
uh, first, I want to um, invite you to join for Sunday School via Zoom. John Hallen will be leading Sunday School today, and if you'd like to join, I'm sure that uh, you will learn some more about this passage that, that we've discussed from Mark chapter 8. Also on Tuesday night, we will continue our discussion on rediscipling the white church, and um, we had a good first discussion on, on uh, this past Tuesday, and, and if, you, if you missed this past week but still want to join us, we'd love to have you, and we'd love to, to have your input as well. And then on Thursday night, we will uh, have our prayer time at 6.30 via Zoom. I do want to share a little bit of good news. Um, first, uh, my, my younger sister, Susanna, gave birth uh, yesterday. Well, I guess today is now, today's Thursday. But um, she gave birth yesterday on Wednesday to our niece, Miller, May, Thomas, Millie. And uh, she was born a week and a couple days late. And so uh, she's doing well. Mom's doing well. They're supposed to go home today around 3.30. And uh, so we're thankful for that. Um, I also have another bit of good news, and that uh, is that Claire and I are now uh, 13 weeks expecting um, our first child, and we are um, excited about, um, about this news. We've uh, been through quite a journey over the last two years, um, and we look forward to um, everything turning out very well this time around. And, uh, and so we would certainly ask that you uh, be praying for, for us and especially for Claire and for uh, the little one that's growing. Uh, yesterday was Claire's uh, 32nd birthday. And um, so we, uh, well, I guess yesterday being Saturday the 27th. And uh, so um, a, lot of, a lot of good things happening right now, but if you'll continue to keep her in your prayers, I know that uh, we would greatly appreciate that. And so um, good news, good news. And um, thank you for praying for us. As we go, th continue through this, this season of Lent together, I hope that you and I will seriously reflect upon the opportunity that we have to deny ourselves, to take up our cross daily and follow Christ. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy choice to make. But if we truly want the kingdom of God to become a part of what we have here on earth as it is in heaven, then it will take us doing these things of self-denial and taking up our cross every day to follow Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, deny yourself today. Think of the needs of others. Don't only concern yourself with the things that help build up your treasures here on earth, but instead relinquish those treasures on earth for treasures in heaven. Deny yourself. Take up your cross today, tomorrow, and every day and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. Joel's going to lead us out in a postlude. We look forward to worshiping with you again on uh, next Sunday and also to joining with you for discussion throughout this week. Have a good week.